We've done the sea creature, we've done the vampire, we've done the wolfman. It's time we continued this Universal Monsters trek with the mummy. And this episode is written by prominent comic writer Jerry Conway, co-creator of The Punisher and Scarlet Spider, and who wrote the issue of Spider-Man where Gwen Stacy died? And the episode of Baywatch Nights with a mummy? And it's a warehouse episode. If there's one thing mummies have been historically into, it's warehouses. Mummies are also interested in model Renee Saran, who was married to Slash of Guns N' Roses until the year this episode aired. Presumably, their divorce was unrelated to this episode of Baywatch Nights. She plays Woman, who doesn't have a name, but her bodyguard has a name, Willis. And they've arrived at this warehouse in the middle of the night to inspect some Egyptian artifacts that are to be transferred to a museum. But the only thing being transferred tonight is Willis's life! Hello, operator. I'd like the most awkward scene transition possible, please. French almond mocha. <laughs> Cafe latte. You have a new client. I want you to solve my murder. <clears throat> okay, uh... <laughs> I just want to point out that the Dutch angles on the show are so bad that when I zoom in and tilt the footage, it's actually straight. <laughs> This is where the body of the chauffeur was found. Oh, gee, Teague, how do you figure that? Woman is convinced that she's going to die for some reason that's never explained. I thought it was because of the mummy's curse thing, but she, she doesn't seem to know about that, so uh, whatever. Anyway, she's enlisted the help of the Buke Bride minus B plus Teague agency. Teague describes the events so far to a denim bedecked Mitch, who is half checked out as usual. Cheeto dust. I'm on the trail. That was a bullet. Fall out of somebody. A bullet never exits a body. I am both knowledgeable and observant. Hey guys, want to see another bad edit? Uh, follow me, guys. I'm a burglar. Despite the fact the regular police have already investigated, and these two were brought in due to the fact the killer was shot several times and walked away, Ryan ignores that part and comes up with a theory that whoever it was, they were there to steal the artifacts and replace them with fakes. Mitch asks what a thief could do with priceless Egyptian artifacts, which confuses Ryan as well because they can't be sold to museums because I guess the black market doesn't exist in Baywatch Nights. Ryan then notices the same dust Mitch did, but when she inspects it, he pretends he never saw it and sarcastically calls her Sherlock. What you got there, Sherlock? You fucking nerd! I've seen something like this before. It was in London, in the British Museum. It was dust from a tomb. Wait, okay, so not only did they have tomb dust on display in the British Museum, but apparently it was of such a unique color and consistency that Ryan instantly recognizes it? And why would it be weird for there to be tomb dust around more Egyptian artifacts? Also, I don't know what specifically about tomb dust is identifiable to her, but isn't it also possible that this shitty warehouse is just dirty? Ah! Uh, look, a bunch of science stuff. Ryan analyzes some piss, I guess, and determines that the tomb dust is over 3,000 years old. Mitch pours himself some coffee in the background. <laughs> I love that Ryan only addresses Teague here. Even she knows that trying to make Mitch give a shit is a losing game at this point. Teague deduces, given the overwhelming evidence of some dust on the floor, that what they've got here is a mummy's curse. Oh, please. The last thing I need is for the two of you to buy into some cockamamie story about King Tut and his mummy. <laughs> How is it that Mitch manages to be mad about the only verifiably true part of that story, that King Tut in fact was a mummy? A sage once said, in absence of proof, the wise withhold both belief and disbelief. Hey, these fish are doing really good. <laughs> Who are we supposed to enjoy watching here? Mr. Romulus and Remus, or the hollowed out husk that once was Mitchell Buchanan? And I know this is a minor point, but where the hell did those fish come from? Ryan attempts to explain how the Egyptians viewed the afterlife, but hell if someone is going to try and teach Mitch something. Uh-oh, this one's getting really fat. No more food for him. And therefore, I get to eat it. 
when Queen Hapsu died, her body wasn't buried until five months later. And in this century, the exact time when the constellation of Sirius passed the meridian, giving rebirth to the entire planet so that she would be reborn in the afterlife. He would personally take her through the portal. I don't, I don't fucking know what anyone is talking about. Ryan's going on about portals, and Mitch is berating some fish, and I think there's something about a mummy queen here, but I'm not entirely sure by the end that it's relevant. I don't know, look, to make an incredibly long and drawn out story short, there's a mummy killing people. Mitch is having none of this. He explains that in the real world, this unnamed client of theirs is a target for murder. He thinks her husband's death may not have been an accident. He says casually, as if we, the audience, had somehow heard any of this information before now. He then makes a very dated Abbott and Costello joke, followed by what I think is just an improvised plea by David Hasselhoff to just have mercy on him and cancel the show. Hey, Abbott! Oh my God, please give, tell these people to stop talking. Meanwhile, Ryan goes to meet with an expert at the museum's insurance company. Are you sure you want to go alone? Oh, I'd prefer it. Ryan hates Mitch, confirmed. The insurance expert is Dr. Kassan, played by Eric Avari, who is continuing his career of playing every that guy of every ethnicity. Ryan says that they've determined that by the time he'd completed his first appraisal of the artifacts, half of them had been replaced by fakes. I'm not sure when she had time to do this or anything in this episode that seems to span only a single day. But nonetheless, Dr. Kassan claiming that everything was genuine comes off as suspicious. He tries to schmooze his way out of it, but Ryan has his number. Plus, he's kinda creepy. One needs luck to truly appreciate life. And beauty. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, I'm so lonely. Anyway, uh, a warehouse shower scene? <laughs> I love cleaning up in a warehouse with my inside the shower towel. On Baywatch nights, we wear clothes. Hello? Mrs. Crowell. Who the hell is Mrs. Crowell? <gasps> warehouse police, I demand to know why there's a shower here and why I'm not in it. On Baywatch nights, we wear clothes. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad this traumatized woman in a towel is here to tend to our hero, Mitch Von Malibu. And I guess the mummy knocked him out and then just wandered off in victory. This is the last time we see woman, by the way. And considering this whole episode kicked off with her asking Ryan to solve her own murder, that was a weird thing to never come back to. But if you think getting chucked around by a mummy is going to stop Mitch from being a total asshole to Ryan, think again. Oh, please, will you stop with the mummies, please? So according to Mitch, someone with superhuman strength is dressing up like a mummy to cover their tracks while they steal priceless artifacts. Like a Scooby-Doo villain. While Mitch goes to sulk into his protein powder, Ryan breaks into the insurance office to basically pull another neener 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 on Dr. Kassan. I'm actually not sure why she feels the need to confront him with the same information she had before, or why she thinks breaking and entering will help their case, but whatever. Instead of finding him, she discovers ancient Egypt behind a bookcase or something? I don't... <laughs> Look, they never explain who these guys are or what is happening. Is it time travel? Are they drugged? Why does it look like ancient Egypt? Dr. Kassan apparently has some sort of plan to open a portal, I, I think with the artifacts he's stealing or, or something, but I don't know what these guys had to do with it. And for that matter, if this had to do with escorting a mummy queen through a portal or something, then I'm not really sure what this other mummy has to do with anything either. I kind of want to stop trying to. I'm sorry for being so judgmental, Mitch. Wandering in without a plan or a single brain cell, Ryan fails to get any sort of response from the weird bookcase men. She does gather some evidence to try and prove the insurance guy is shady, but like, she already had proof that the artifacts were fake. And at this point, I kind of feel like there's a bigger picture here that's being missed. By me also, I don't know what's going on. Foolishly believing Mitch would be at the office, Ryan calls and leaves a message for him all about what she's found. I'm not surprised Mitch is fucked off somewhere, but where is Teague at this point? 
She just left him at the agency, and I guess he got bored and wandered out of the episode to celebrate the time of the demons. <laughs> I forgot to call the fish fat again, I'll be in and out. Hey, where'd everybody go? Go get her, boy! <laughs> you got it, boss! After about a decade of Ryan wandering through the cave set, she finds the sarcophagus we just saw the mummy leaving. So I guess he got out, stood by Dr. Kassan for no reason, and then circled back. <coughs> ah, no thanks, I don't do pot! Now let's do the same scenes with me! That'll pad out the runtime! Sauntering! The episode! <laughs> You're literally repeating the exact same shots! Get to the damn point! Yeah! Mummies don't exist! I'm just setting a thief on fire, as you do! Let me get this straight. You want to make me the mummy's bride and open a portal or something? Sure, let's go with that. This is not the first or last piece of media I've seen where the villain dresses up in the most Las Vegas version of an Egyptian outfit possible, but it is probably the saddest. And I saw that episode of Relic Hunter with Sable. Nobody is gonna wear cheap gold lame on my watch! Don't make me come over there! As it was written... Uh, uh, Loafered! It's hopeless, Mitch! He's gonna... Oh wait, he just let go of my hand. Never mind. Well, I guess we're just gonna leave then. See ya! What the hell was even accomplished here? We didn't see this, didn't we? See what? Next time on Baywatch, the gang must stop a terrorist from contaminating the water supply with a deadly virus. Meanwhile, a nude beach. <laughs> and that's the naked truth.